Peace, I'm Common. I'm from the south side of Chicago. I'm an MC. I'm a hip hop artist. I'm an activist. Yeah, I'm Chicago. Resurrection was a new sound because I was just that young Chicago dude. I was sitting around drinking beers with my homies, but I also was seeking out knowledge. And, and you know, I was out here around gang banging with cats, but at the same token, I'm still like a spiritual dude, you know? I was freestyling a lot. I was really working on my rhymes, but at the same time, I was listening to John Coltrane. I was reading the Quran, the Bible, opening my mind up and really starting to say, man, I got, I got to think on a higher level. One of the songs on the album is called Book of Life. And it's me talking about where I am in life. I'm 22, catch. In the prime of my life, I have no time for a wife. I funnel through the tunnel, disgruntled, trying to find me some light. One game-changing moment for the album Resurrection was hearing Nas on Illmatic. I was like, this is where the level is? I, I got to work way harder. It made me go back to thinking about how James Baldwin and, and Richard Wright how Nikki Giovanni and Dr. Maya Angelou write. And I was like, oh man, I could really be a writer as an MC. Me being open and being vulnerable, it really came natural. I really just was like, man, let me say what, I, what I'm feeling and not think about like, do I sound cool? I was like, look, man, I'm going through some things right now. And this is what I'm writing about. In Chicago, we grew up listening to Earth, Wind & Fire, Minnie Riperton and Shaka Khan, the Commodores, Marvin Gaye, all that. No ID was able to bring in a lot of different elements of music, and he produced the majority of the album. We started to get to a sound eventually. We had got a chance to come to New York, and we connected with the Beat Nuts and Vic. You know, it was getting up on jazz, so if you listen to Resurrection, it definitely has a jazz influence to it. Well, bust it out for the 94 shot. Resurrection was when I first started writing my songs in the car. I don't write my rhymes down. I would just say them in my head. I would actually just hop in the car, ride around up and down Lakeshore Drive, writing the songs, and I actually say it in the song Resurrection, cruise the south side streets with no heat and no sticker. I didn't have no sticker on my car, like no city sticker, there, you know, and, and I had no heat. I couldn't afford the heat. You know, that's tough in Chicago. The genesis of I Used to Love Her, I'd already had the music that uh, No ID created. He had sampled this George Benson. I loved this the sample and what the baseline he had for it. And I was like thinking how I was starting to feel about hip hop culture, like people were losing their essence. It was artists from the East Coast that were doing songs, talking about hitting switches on their cars. And I was like, man, they don't do that in New York. But they were doing that to emulate what was selling the most, which was Snoop and, and Dre. And the dope thing about hip hop was that I kind of felt like I knew what Queens was about because of Nas or because of Mob Deep. It wasn't about like Queens emulating LA. And that's why I started writing that song. I was thinking, what if I made hip hop a girl? I met this girl when I was 10 years old. What I love most, she has so much so. My roommate, as I was rapping, I could see him and he was frowning up because he like, why is he talking all this stuff about this girl? As soon as I said who I'm talking about is hip hop, he just, Kind of was like, oh, my. you know, no, that's the reaction I, I wanted. So clever was really an attribute in, in hip hop. She was old school, and I was just a shorty never knew. Throughout my life, she would be there for me. One of the things I remember was my father coming to the studio. I said, Dad, why don't you go in the booth and say something? He was like, what you want me to say? I said, just talk like how you be talking to me on the phone, or just, you know, you're always running your mouth. But it was a lot of wisdom, I knew. He always says wise things, funny things, good things. So he just went in the booth, and uh, that was the beginning of Pops Rap. And that was really like a, a moment for me in the recording of it. My main man, my son, Common Sense. They used to call me No Sense. Now they say I got plenty of sense. About 6,000 years up. When we turned in the album Resurrection, that felt like the real birth of a child. Like, like I was super enthused about what the album sounded like. I was really trying to get Chicago and the hood to feel me too. So I remember us going out to the projects, going out, taking the promo stuff and getting out the car. We was holding up cassette tapes, like sampler tapes, holding them up because you couldn't just go to no neighborhood and just be like, get out the car. So we had to hold up, yo, we got these tapes to get y'all. And um, Castro started responding. So I remember being very excited, like feeling like this music could reach people that I never reached. It definitely was life-changing. Biggie came and said, 
Yo, comments, you, yo, what's up? That, that shit is dope, bro. That shit is dope. And I was like, oh man, people who I actually, you know, look up to um, are recognizing me. For me to be able to say, yo, let me take you back to 94. And, I, and in my mind, sometimes I'm really like, damn, you wasn't even born then. And you, <laughs> but you rock into this joint, like, you know, it's a, it's a gift, man.